Here's our setup for the rotational inertia lab. I've got my laptop and my interface to connect my sensors and I have here a lazy Susan turntable that I can create a torque on it with a string by attaching it to the side of the table. So I can wind up the string and hang it over this pulley and now when I attach a weight to the pulley now there's tension in the string the tension pulls at the edge of the disc a distance R away producing a torque and when I release it it rotates the table so what I'll do first is I'll do an experiment to measure the rotational inertia of the table then we'll add objects to the table and we'll repeat the experiment and then we'll measure the rotational inertia of everything and then when we have that we will subtract out the rotational inertia of the table by itself and we'll be left with the rotational inertia of the object that was on the turntable and then we'll compare that value of rotational inertia that we get experimentally with the values that are predicted in table 10-2 and we'll see how close we come. This sensor right here is called a smart pulley and what it does is there are spokes in the in the wheel and right here is an LED light that as the spokes pass by the light they block the light or allow the light through and based on how quickly the light is flashing to the sensor it knows how fast this wheel is spinning. So therefore we can measure the velocity of the string as it passes over the pulley which of course if we can measure the velocity of the string as it moves over the pulley that's also the velocity of the edge of the table. So we can measure the tangential velocity of the platform and if we can measure it over time and see how much it's changing then we can figure out using the slope of the velocity time graph we can figure out the tangential acceleration of the table so what we'll do is we'll wind up our string hang the weight over the pulley start our data collection and we will release the table and now we'll have data measuring the velocity as a function of time. We'll use the acceleration that we measure to figure out what the tension in the string is and once we know the tension in the string I know that is my perpendicular force at the edge of the turntable which is some distance r away. I'll be able to measure that distance r with my meter stick and therefore the force and the radius I'll be able to calculate the torque. Once I know the torque then I can relate the torque to the moment of inertia and the angular acceleration of the disk through Newton's second law of angular motion. Torque is equal to I times alpha. I can rearrange that equation to say that the moment of inertia is equal to torque divided by alpha. Then I'll use my experimental values that I measured for torque and angular acceleration to come up with the moment of inertia of the turntable plus the object. All right, this is the rotational inertia pre-lab activity. Number one, assuming that the string does not slip, algebraically determine the equation needed to calculate the angular acceleration alpha of the turntable in terms of the radius of the turntable r and a the falling masses acceleration which is also the tangential acceleration of the turntable okay number one so I know that a t is equal to r alpha so therefore alpha is equal to a t divided by r where a t is the tangential acceleration of the turntable that's what I'll be measuring with my smart pulley and R is the radius of the turntable. Number two, draw a force diagram of the falling mass M and determine the algebraic equation for the tension T in the string in terms of M 
g and the acceleration a of the mass. Okay. So there is our mass, our falling mass m. There is the string pulling up on it with tension t. And there is gravity pulling down on it with the force of the mass's weight, which is mg. And I know the sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration. I'm going to let the direction of the motion be the positive direction. So that means mg is in the positive direction and minus t, which is in the negative direction, equals mass times acceleration. So that means my tension in the string then will be mg minus ma, or the tension in the string will be mass g minus a. This is the hanging mass. This is 9.8, and this is the tangential acceleration of the wheel, also the acceleration of the falling mass. Number three, write the equation for the torque produced on the turntable by the string in terms of tension and turntable radius r. So here's our turntable. It has radius r, and the string will be passing over the pulley like that. And while it's accelerating, remember, the tension in the string is not equal to the weight. The tension in the string is equal to the weight minus the term ma. So that's what we found right here. So that value is the tension in the string, and it is pulling on the edge of the turntable at radius r, producing a torque. Torque is equal to the perpendicular force times the radius. We see here that the tension is perpendicular to the radius, so this just becomes the tension times the radius of the disk is equal to the torque from the string. Number four, Newton's second law for angular motion is sum of torques is equal to I alpha. Our net torque consists of two torques, one from the tension in the string and one from the opposing force of friction. This leads to our equation, the net torque is equal to I alpha. But we just decided the net torque is the sum of the torque from the string which will be a positive torque because the direction of the motion is what we'll call the positive direction. And then the torque from friction opposes that, so we'll, so it's in the negative direction, and we'll call it torque sub friction. Solve the equation in step four for T string. Okay, so the tension in the string then, the torque in the string is equal to I alpha plus the torque from friction. Okay. Number six, look at your equation from step five. If we let t string be our dependent y variable and let alpha be our independent x variable, identify the shape of the graph we should get from this equation. Okay, so if you look at this, this really is, we're going to let the torque from the string be our y variable and our Alpha is going to be our x variable, and we see this is in the form of y equals mx plus b. So we're going to make a graph then with the torque from the string on the y-axis, angular acceleration alpha on the x-axis, and here's where we would find the moment of inertia in our graph. It is the slope of the graph. And number eight, so when we find the moment of inertia, we're finding the moment of inertia of everything, the total of the table and the object that's on the table. So since we first found the moment of inertia of the table by itself, now we can subtract out that inertia from the total inertia, and we're left with the inertia of the object itself. We're going to start by taking our data for the turntable alone. So you can see in your data table, we're going to do it four times, once with a hanging weight of 50 grams, then 90 grams, then 130 grams, then 170 grams. So let's go ahead and take our first measurement, pulling with 50 grams of mass, and let the table go. 
So here's what the data looks like. You can see here the velocity is increasing as the table begins to spin. Then here is where the weight hits the floor. But this is the part we care about. This is the part where the table is accelerating. So I'm going to highlight that section and I'm going to fit a curve to it. There we go. So you can see I have an acceleration of 1.2 meters per second squared. That is the acceleration of the string. That is the acceleration of the falling weight. That is the tangential acceleration of the edge of the turntable. Next, I'll add 40 grams so that now my hanging weight is 90 grams. I'll repeat it and I'll continue adding mass and get four runs of data for the turntable alone. So here is my table alone with the four runs that were performed. And so I need to find the slope of each one. So I'm going to highlight each one and do a linear fit to it. Okay, so there I've done a linear fit to that guy. And now I'm going to do it for each run. Actually, I can do it all at the same time, can I? Look at that. Oh boy, that was easy. Okay, so that's all you do. Highlight a region that only includes the straight line portions of the graph, and then click right here, this icon, Linear Fit, and check all four runs, and now you can see the slope of the graphs, which of course, slope of velocity time is acceleration. That is the tangential acceleration of the table. Next, we'll choose an object. Here is a silver metal tile, and I've measured its mass on the scale, 1,247 grams. Now I'm going to place it on the turntable, and of course, I want to in ensure that it is centered, because remember, where the axis of rotation makes a difference on the moment of inertia. So I want this axis of rotation to pass through the center of mass. So I'm just going to feel with my fingers and do the best I can to make sure that it is centered. There we go. I think I've got it centered now. I'm going to go ahead and wind up my string. And now I will hang 50 grams on the turntable. Let it go. As before, I'll take some weights and I'll add 40 grams at a time and I'll get four measurements. The first one was 50 grams, then 90 grams, then 130 grams, and then 170 grams pulling mass. Next, I've got a brown tile square. A wooden cylinder. Ugh. We don't mess around. This is a flagstone like you find in your garden. Made of cinder block. Quite heavy. Ugh. So here's my logger profile with my four runs, and so there's my slope of my first run, that's 50 grams on the table by itself, 0.9665. So that's my tangential acceleration. All right, once you get your slope of the graph, 0.9665, then you're going to enter that into your table. So here we go. My Table alone, turntable alone, pulling mass of 50 grams, my tangential acceleration from the graph, 
was 0.965. Then alpha, I know alpha is equal to AT divided by R. The radius of the wheel is 0 0.15 meters. So that goes right here, 6.43. Referring to the equations we found in our pre-lab then. I'll repeat those calculations for each of my accelerating masses. Now, what do I do with my results? Well, these, this is what I'm interested in. Alpha and torque. Remember, we're going to create a graph of alpha, angular acceleration, as a function of the torque from the string. Uh, alpha there and torque here. And from the table, you'll get four values, four pairs, or four data pairs. They should look something like that and use some graphing software or fit a line of best fit to those data points. And that is going to determine from our equation. There we go. The slope of this graph, the torque as a function of alpha, is going to be your moment of inertia. For this lab, you'll be provided with the handout with the instructions. And then also you will be provided data for two objects. So we showed you four objects being rotated on the turntable, but you're only going to be required to make graphs for two of them. So let's just review here what we're sending you. This is the instructions. If you had performed the lab yourself, uh, instead of watching me do it, these are the instructions. So you can skim through those if you like. It's, it's the instructions that I followed. But here on the second page is where you want to pay particular attention. So follow along the instructions. This is how you determine the rotational inertia of the turntable alone. I described it in the video, but here are uh, printed instructions. And then instructions on how to calculate the rotational inertia of the object that is on the turntable. And then down here, step 20, these are instructions for how to calculate the percent difference between your exper experimental value that you found uh, with, with the lab, and then up here in step 19, the values that you expect to get using the equations provided to us in the textbook. Then on the fourth page, this is where you can print out uh, your data sheet to fill out. So here is the portion of the data table that is for the turntable by itself. And here's where you enter your information for object number one and for object number two. Then down here in this bottom table, the turntable alone, there's your calculated moment of inertia for the table by itself. And then in these two boxes, these are the inertias of the table plus the object. Then from these numbers here, you subtract out the inertia of the table to come up with the inertia of the object by itself. This is your experimental value right here. Then over here is your theoretical value that you calculate with the equations provided in the textbook. And then over here is the percent error between your experimental value and your theoretical value. Here's what you should make sure you include. The three velocity time graphs with the slopes labeled with Logger Pro. Each graph should have four plots corresponding to hanging the four hanging masses. And then your torque versus alpha plots, you can probably fit all three of those onto one single graph, but three plots, one for the table by itself, and one for each object that you have been assigned. And then, of course, because you have some percent error, we're asking you to come up with possible reasons 
what could happen in your experiment to cause this number to be different than your theoretical value. We're also going to provide you uh, with this sheet right here. This gives the masses and the dimensions of the four objects. So you take the two that were assigned to you. And then also, just to be clear, your graphs, you'll have three velocity time graphs, one for the table and one for object number one and one for object number two. Those will be from Logger Pro, so you'll have three separate graphs for that part. And then your slope graphs that allow you to find the inertia. You can likely fit all those on one graph, or you can have three graphs. It's up to you. One for the table by itself, one for object number one, and one for object number two.